11 games to go the rest of the way as the Braves hang on to hope for a place in the postseason. A wild card berth is not yet out of reach. An opportunity awaits again tonight as the Braves face the National League Eastern champs. It's the final meeting of the regular season between the Nats and the Braves, and it's coming up next. From beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Braves baseball. Tonight from Turner Field in Atlanta, it's the Braves and the Washington Nationals. All year long, Braves baseball is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. Atlanta tries to finish off their season series with the Nets with a curly W of their own. Washington's won the East. The Braves still alive in the wild card and tries to get back to 500 here tonight. Special night at the ballpark. It's Tom Glavin bobblehead night, and with Tom Glavin, we're the two other guys. This is a very big game for Atlanta tonight, Tommy. And who better on your night than a solid left-hander, Alex Wood, who gets the ball in Game Three of the series? Well, it seems like we say that about the starting pitcher every night, but I got to tell you, I've really watched, I've really enjoyed watching this kid grow up and really uh, uh, hone his craft, so to speak. He's done everything the Braves have asked him to do. He started, he's relieved, he's gone back to the starting rotation, and he really has thrived here in this last stint in the rotation. He's aggressive in the strike zone, uses his pitches all over the strike zone, in the strike zone, out of the strike zone, expands the strike zone. Don't let that unorthodox delivery fool you. He knows what he's doing. He gets into a good position to throw every pitch, and he's aggressive with every pitch. And really, if he had any help, Joe, he'd be a 15 or 20 game winner. Unbelievable how his lack of run support has affected his numbers. His last nine starts, as you read those numbers, here are the scores. He got beat three to two, lost four to two, won three to one. He actually got seven runs in a game against Oakland and won that one seven to two. He lost three to two. He lost three to two. He won one to nothing. He won four to three, and he lost two to one. It's amazing that his numbers are as good as they are, given the fact that he gets zero runs to work with on a typical night. Well, hopefully he'll get plenty of runs tonight against a Washington lineup that is without their stars. They're still celebrating the division championship last night. And Blake Trinan gets the ball for the Nats instead of Gio Gonzalez in this series wrap up. It's a beautiful night for baseball. It's the Braves. It's the Nationals. And when we come back, it's a special night for Craig Kimbrell as well. Jen Hildreth will tell you why when we come back to Turner Field after this.
Crown Division champs, the season finale between the Braves and the Nats on the way. Hey guys, I'm Jen Hildreth at Turner Field, where we have had to go without Guns N' Roses, a.k.a. closer Craig Kimbrell, for quite some time now. His last appearance here came back on September 3rd against the Phillies, but while Craig hasn't been able to get on the field, he has not been idle off of it. For that, we're going to go to our Zaxby's indescribably good play. Earlier tonight, Craig honored as the Braves nominee for the Roberto Clemente Award for positive contributions on and off the field. Now, on the field, even if we haven't had a chance to see it recently, you know what Craig Kimbrell can do. He's the franchise's all-time saves leader. He strikes out a lot of guys. 42% of the guys he faces take a seat. That's the best for relief pitchers with at least 150 saves in Major League history. And this is a guy who takes pride in making a difference both on and off the field. Yeah, I, I wake up and I, I try to make a difference. I think that's that should be every not not only a, a baseball player or a professional athlete, but as a person, um, you just need to wake up every day and try to make a difference and, and make make a, something better in this world. And uh, I think if if everybody did that, the world would be a, a lot better place. So well said. You can see why Craig Kimbrell is such a great ambassador, not only for the Braves but for the charity he and his wife Ashley work very closely with, called Curing Kids Cancer. I don't know about you. I hope we do get a chance to release the Kimbrel tonight. Craig Kimbrel with just two save opportunities this month. Let's see if we can get him another one. The Braves and the Nats are going to wrap things up. Series finale after this. Ed Dahl is Joe Simpson, the best analyst in business. What timing. See him nodding, Joe? That was awful nice of Tommy to do that for Well, him. he's quite a player. <laughs> you can talk, it's okay. Game oh, three. No, I was, I was just soaking it all in. <laughs> Braves and Nationals, Alex Wood ready to go. As the Washington Club celebrating their division championship, they've got their minor league lineup in tonight. And that lineup starts with Michael Taylor, who's hit a home run this year, and he lays down a butt, and it is trickling foul down the third base line. So the Nationals clinch the East, their regulars get a rest, and Taylor leads things off. Espinosa, Franz in at third, and batting third. Steven Souza Jr. had a run in with the wall against the Braves. You might remember that. And Blake Trinan gets the start. He's the pitcher in the Toyota starting nine for the Nationals. Alex Here's Alex Wood. Wood. Sorry, making his 23rd start on the year. 10 and 10, and you see why. And his seven wins. We've talked about it, and we'll talk more about it. 
43 runs scored in his seven wins, 18 runs in his nine losses. And that number at the bottom, three runs of uh, three runs of support per start. It's even worse than that when you really break it down to just when he's been in the game. So he hasn't gotten a lot of help. And the four pitching keys to success for Alex Wood tonight. Number one, where's the report? I need a scouting report on these guys tonight. A lot of new faces. And the second one, protect the lead. What lead? He's going to get a lead tonight. Okay? I like it. It's coming. Well, here's a scouting report on Michael Taylor. He was the Eastern League Rookie of the Year at Double A for the Nationals this year. He was a sixth round draft pick as a shortstop. They converted him to the outfield in 2011. So perhaps by the time Denard Span is done, Taylor could be the guy that replaces him in center field in Washington. And Tom Hyde with that distinctive strike three call rings him up for the first out of the game. Whipped a little high. Let's see. No, nope, right there. I think it was more that they were set up inside and it ended up a little yeah. bit more on the outer part of the plate. But don't overlook the fact for these guys that are in here today and, and probably will get some more chances as the season goes on. This is a big opportunity for them. They're going to be playing with some emotion, with some vinegar, with some hey, let's I, this is my chance to shine and show the show the front office what I can do. And they're going to be playing hard. Well, there are still things for Washington to play for. That ball by Danny Espinosa is bounced foul. First and foremost now is best record in the league. And then, as you said, Tom, guys like Espinosa and others want to make positive impressions for Matt Williams and Mike Rizzo and the rest of the Nationals organization for a potential spot on their playoff roster. Plus, they've got Espinosa, France, and Tyler Moore and Sherholtz in the lineup, and they certainly have been in there before. It's two of those. Just a little high. Just keeping him loose. Two balls and a strike for Espinosa and bounced at the plate. The question for Espinosa is going to come this offseason. He may go to instructional league. They have contemplated having him give up switch hitting. He's a much better hitter for average from the right side of the plate. Or he's hitting over 300 this year. He has more power as a left handed hitter. So, a chance for him to play tonight, bat right handed against Alex Wood. Kevin Franzen next, then Tyler Moore, the Washington first baseman. And missed a corner, full count. Alex has pitched great against the Nationals, Joe said. Not much run support. Washington scores a lot of early runs, a lot of first inning runs. It has yet to happen in this series. And a shot over short will drop in for Espinosa. One out single in front of Kevin Franson. A few pitches up in the zone here already to the first two hitters. A couple that went to the backstop. And this change up left upstairs. Franzen's been swinging a hot bat, 13 for his last 30 over a 16 game stretch. Versatile guy, can get off the bench, can play the outfield, almost all the infield spots. And he's going to bounce to short. That should be an easy double play. And it is. Washington retired in the first inning, no runs a hit, none left. Phil Gosselin leads things off for the Braves in a scoreless bottom of the first.
Braves and Nets and Tom Clavin bobblehead night. Let's see if the Braves can get back to 500 and gain some ground in the wild card race. Same lineup for the Braves tonight with Chris Johnson batting in the seventh spot. He's had three singles in the series against the Nationals. Phil Gosselin has been very impressive offensively too. He leads off again. Alex Wood pitches for Atlanta. Blake Trinan gets the ball for the Nationals and fellas he wasn't the original starter assigned this game. Nice. You see his numbers replacing Gio Gonzalez for tonight's start. Eight games as a reliever, one and oh. Five games as a starter, one and three. Pretty good ERA in both roles, so this is a good opportunity for him. Go out there as a starter, see what he can do over the course of five, six, seven innings and show his stuff. And the word scouting report for Blake Trinan after the celebration last night past the Visine. Everybody will have their eyes checked today before they take the field. And the Chiefs versus the Braves. A lot of the guys in the lineup are on a uh, division champion Syracuse Chiefs team. So we've got a good battle going on here tonight. If you like to play on words. Loved it as trying to miss high. Did you? Did you really mean it? I just say no. That? Loved it. Okay. When you saw when you had Chiefs up there, I thought you were talking about the Charlestown Chiefs, and they had the Hanson brothers ready yes. for us tonight. Could only hope. We were talking before the game about this young man and the job he's done since coming up from the minor leagues. Heck, he had a big year for Gwinnett at AAA too. I hate to use the term coming out of nowhere, but I don't remember an awful lot of talk about Phil Gosselin this spring in Orlando. I think it's a, an appropriate term. Just not a lot of fanfare for him. A lot of talk about some other prospects and some guys who were close to maybe making the major league club. Phil Gosselin's name not really mentioned that often. Well, that's one of the great things about getting invited to big league camp aside from a little bit better conditions and you get a little bit more meal money you get an opportunity and you never know it seems like every year somebody plays their way into uh, or on the radar screen and there he is going up the middle Nelson had two hits last night and he has a first inning single in back to back games. Does that so well on anything up and in, keeping his hands inside the baseball, and he's got a new helper over there at first base tonight. Scott Fletcher, the Braves' assistant hitting coach, filling in for Terry Pendleton, who's got a bad back tonight. So TP, hope you're feeling better. Yeah, he wasn't getting around too well tonight before the game. And a strike to Andrelton Simmons. Hamilton has three hits in the series, a couple of doubles, a single, and a run scored. His 32nd game tonight for the Braves, batting in the number two spot on the lineup card. Braves got their leadoff man on base four times last night, yet still got shut out. Better try to take advantage of that a little better tonight. A lot better, as a matter of fact. Hopper left side. Espinosa fires to second for one and the return through the first. Will be a step late. Espinosa was a shortstop in college. And he got the leading runner. Gosselin's out number one. Simmons at first for Freddie Freeman. Freeman at 291, 18 homers, 73 driven in. His 11 game hit streak came to an end last night with an 0 for 4 game. But still 14 hits in his last 44 at bats. Make it 15 for 45 with a looper in the shallow center. Braves play it station to station. As you know, Anderson Simmons still a very sore left ankle and he's bent at the waist as he stands at second base. His pain. Okay, he's, he's tweaked that thing a number of times this, this series, it seems like.
favoring it the whole way to second. So we'll keep an eye on that as Justin Upton hits. And a called strike. Blake training throws hard. 92 to 97 is fastball. Two seamer and four seamer. Slider and a changeup. Out of South Dakota State University. Bouncing ball right side. Espinosa the turn. And a double play ends Atlanta's first inning. No runs, a couple of hits. And a man left. We go to the second, no score. Score as we head to the second and for the ninth straight game, still no Evan Gaddis. We did finally receive an update though before the game. General Manager Frank Wren meeting with the media and saying that what they are now diagnosing Gaddis with is a kidney stone. Initially, it was strep throat. He said a lot of tests came back with some abnormal results when the team was in Texas, had him checked out this week when they got back to Atlanta, and that is what they're diagnosing him with now. And one more injury or not update for you guys. Andrelton Simmons, you talked about he looked a little gimpy out there. Well, Doug DeCenzo came off the field and looked at Freddy Gonzalez, said, I asked him three times. He keeps telling me he's all right. Hopefully that's the case. He's not. He just wants to stay out there and play. Yeah, all right. It's a relative term right now. Yeah. This is Tyler Moore for the Nationals. And Tyler Moore is down on three pitches. Alex Wood has his second strike out of the game. Thanks, Jim, for that on uh, Evan Gaddis, too. I think a lot of people, including me, were wondering and worrying why the strep throat wasn't getting knocked out with uh, all the. Antibi uh, antibiotics that he was taking. So now, now we know. And th this is a. I hope it's not a dumb. I assume he's passed the kidney stone or no, was taking care of He has not. He has not. Oh, man. I don't even want to think about that. Strike to Sheerholtz. Seven homers, 35 knocked in for Nate. Played for the Braves September 7th. That was the game down in Miami before we headed to Washington. 
and said he started feeling bad toward the end of that ball game. And he has missed about 50 games this year for the Braves, either for time off or because of injury. Remember, he had the back problem earlier this year. And now, strep throat and a kidney stone in the final two weeks. That just missed. Two balls, two strikes. That's headed for the seats foul. Swing and a miss by Nate Sherholtz. Jen, you have more on Evan Gaddis? Yeah, just to put a cap on that story, Chip, I'm sorry I didn't bring that up initially. You're, you were right, Joe. He has not passed the kidney stone yet, and so the official status remains day to day as long as the symptoms persist. And Frank Wren said he couldn't go into a lot of detail as to what all of those symptoms were because it is a non baseball related injury, so he's restricted by some of the HIPAA privacy laws. But that's all we've got to go with for now, day to day. But at least it's it's more than what we knew coming into tonight. Maybe too much more. Yikes. So get well soon, Evan Gaddis, says Steven Souza bats. Souza made his big league debut against the Braves in April. April 13th, he struck out in his first at bat. And on August 8th, he ran into the wall. I remember that. He was, we think, knocked out on his feet. That's right. But he had a marvelous triple-A year. Those were his major league numbers. He had 354 triple-A, 18 homers, 75 RBIs, and stole 26 bases. That's a heck of a year. Yeah, that'll, that'll earn you a call-up for sure. International League MVP and Rookie of the Year. Right now, the way the Nationals lineup is constructed, there's no place for him to play. Outfield set, they're infield set, and they've got Ryan Zimmerman rehabbing in Florida. Check swing into the seats foul. And ricochets back out of the field of play. Souza, 6'4, 224 pounds. 25 years old out of Everett, Washington. And that's got him in the third round of the 07 draft. He was another infielder moved to the outfield. He started his pro career at third base. Slowly hit towards short. Simmons charges and throws on the run and got Stutsuzo by a quarter step. Bang, bang, play ends the top of the second. No score.
Atlanta Braves and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves. Beautiful sunset in Atlanta where the Braves and Nats wrap up their season series tonight. No score as the Braves sent Hayward, Bethancourt, and Chris Johnson to the plate for that trio bats for that man. Let's check out our cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. That's cold and that's hard. September 3 and 11. Less than average. Average runs per game. And they've lost five in a row. Sharply hit to second. Coburn has slipped as he regained his footing. And Hayward bounces out, start inning number two. Blake Trennan, when he's been called up, he's drawn some tough assignments too. He hasn't caught any breaks. His opposing pitchers in his first five starts Kershaw, Volquez, Kashner, Hudson, and Samarja. And tonight, Alex Wood. Now, that'll explain his 100 batting average. <laughs> I don't get many hits against those guys. <laughs> Christian Bethancourt. Ralph Gaddis dealing with the kidney stone. Christian's got an extended playing time behind the plate. So let me ask a man who's used to staring at young catchers. What do you think of what you've seen, Tommy, out of Christian so far? I mean, he's lived up to all the hype, I think. I mean, he's. Showed his arm and that side of his skill set. I think he's. Does he take strike three there? I think he's hit well, maybe better than you would have expected. And um, you know he seems to call a good game back there. He seems to be pretty in tune with what the, what the pitchers are trying to do. Good pitch. First strikeout for Trinan. Chris Johnson bats with two down. And up and away for Chris. One ball, no strikes. Three singles in the series for Johnson. Bouncer toward Espinoza. He takes a look at the ball and fires to first in time. And a very easy inning for Trinan. Three up, three down in the Atlanta second. Gobernus, Leon, and Blake are coming up. No score. Are pitchers athletes? Is Glavin the best dress announcer? Is Smoltz funnier than Glavin? <laughs> nah, now nah, you've gone too far. The rest of it was perfect, but that, oh man. Well, this is what we have to live with tonight, folks. Yeah, well, there's more. We can bring more out. <laughs> <laughs> Probably put a couple over here. 
Yeah, if, you, if it makes you feel better. Puts them on the show. monitor for you, so when you look over to see a replay, you're actually what's see my that, bobblehead. What's that note say on your batter matchups? I heart me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, that's a great looking bobblehead, though. Congrats, Tommy. That's, that's really a, a nice thing the Braves did for you tonight. Very cool. As Jeff Coburn of Spats, he leads off the third inning for the Nationals. He's out of Cal Berkeley, a second round pick in 09. And up and away from Wood, who's missed high a lot early on tonight. Three balls, no strikes. Fast runner, too. Don't really want to put him on leading off an inning. Suffered a broken hand in April that put a dent in some of his number totals for the year. He still stole 15 bases for the Chiefs. And he'll be putting on the foil as he makes his way to first base. A leadoff walk. And that's the second base runner allowed by Alex Wood tonight. And that'll bring up Sandy Leon. He's a cool story. He's out of Venezuela. I used to hear. Once in a while, a couple years in Major League Baseball, a kid gets signed out of a tryout camp. Well, that was the case for Leon. Mike Rizzo, the general manager, saw this kid, signed him, and here he is in the big leagues. Wood has a very good pickoff move, especially to second base. He's picked off a lot of guys there. Ain't that close. Corbin is diving back. And a strike. It's funny how the twists and turns of a season take place and how it affects the fates of a major league player. In the case of Alex Wood, you might recall he went to the bullpen for Atlanta. And Gavin Floyd was pitching and pitching well. The Braves needed Alex to pitch out of the bullpen. They also wanted him to limit his innings. Before he was stretched out to a full time major league starter. Well, when Floyd got hurt against the Nationals in Washington, Braves had to send Alex back to the minor leagues to get stretched out. Well, he's come back and has arguably, arguably been the best Braves pitcher in rotation the second half of the season. Now, you certainly make the argument that he's been consistently the, the most dominant, so to speak, in terms of night in and night out, just going out there and having those kinds of games where you're just wondering how he's not winning. Got a better ERA than Julio Tehran. Not much. 283 to 289. 0-2 to Leon. He's way high. I think Tommy answered your own question in, in the pregame. No runs. No, I mean it's and not this. This is one of those years that I've. I know people have heard me talk about. It's you know you keep getting the hey, attaboy, boy, nice job. Well, you know, you, and then at the end of the day, you look at your record and you're 10 and 10 and. Like I said, with any help, he's easily a 15 game winner and might even have a shot at 20. What I love about Alex, too, is you know, our job as reporters is to ask that question. You know, how do you deal with this? And he, I think, has handled that great. Especially with when the Braves were still in the hunt for the East. That one's popped back our way foul. Alex said, look, what I do is secondary to what the team does. If I go out and give my team a chance to win every day, I've done everything I can. Would he like to pick up wins individually? Of course, but if the team wins, in essence, he said, I don't care what my result is. I like to hear young players say that kind of stuff. Well, you, you do, and it's I think it's a little easier for young players to say it than, than veteran guys, but you know, he's certainly in a position where he's trying to establish himself. He's been back and forth from bullpen to starting rotation. I know he preferred to be in the starting rotation, so this has been his opportunity to go out and show what he can do, and he's done it. Uh, and he's proven what he can do. Now the next step, now he, he wants to start winning games. I mean, that's what you go out there to do. That's what you get paid for. He's drawn tough assignments too all year long. Uh, just the luck of the draw. But he had a three-start stretch. Twice it was Jose Fernandez back to back against the Marlins, and then Madison Bumgarner against the Giants, and he got beat in those games one to nothing, nine to nothing, and four to one. He got the loss in all three. Mm -hmm.
got one run to work with in those three starts. That's a bullet foul at third. Leon putting up a battle here in the inning. I think the one of the things that I really like though is and you guys have heard me talk about this too before is when you're going like that sometimes you get in that mode where you go out there and you pitch not to lose and, and you lose some of your aggressiveness and you're not getting after guys. He hasn't done that. He's, no. he's gone out there every time he goes out there with the intent to win a ball game and for a young kid that that's a big deal to be able to do that. Yeah, he very much expects to win. We've liked his demeanor all year long. Never a woe is me type look on his face. In fact, the stickier things get, it seems like the tougher he gets. He'd like to end this at bat. Right up to 40 pitches. Marion out here in the third inning so far. He struck out three, walked one, double play into the Washington first. No score, top of the third inning. And there's the breaking ball. Leon missed it by plenty, and there's strikeout number four. And had some snap. Bit of a knuckle. One knuckle up curveball. So here's trying in one for ten as Tom said seven strikeouts in those ten at bats. He shows butt. He lays down a beauty. And a little confusion with Bethancourt. Uh, Tom Howdian said no problem on the play. Bethancourt made it. And there's the second out. A two four sacrifice and now Taylor is the hitter. Fielder has the right to the ball. You see the point there by Tom Hallion in case there had been an issue on the play at first. He had the right to call obstruction and maybe rule if need be. Rule trying it out anyway. So Michael Taylor, the batter, he had a big thrill on Monday when the Nationals got to town. Taylor and several of his Nationals teammates were working out in the weight room here at the ballpark in a Room adjacent to that facility. Some folks were doing a TV interview with a legendary member of the Braves organization. The Nationals were asked if they could turn down the music, and they did. When that interview ended, that legendary figure walked by the weight room and peeked in. It was Hank Aaron. And Taylor got a chance to talk with Henry Aaron and with Jordan Zimmerman and others. The 1 0 pitch, which was popped out of play. And story in the Washington Post Taylor asked Hank Aaron, Hey, what's the secret? How do you, how did you do what you did? And Henry Aaron's response hard work and confidence. The latter will go a long way. Sure will. One ball, one strike. So many amazing things about the life and career of Henry Aaron, but his ability to still inspire awe in, in young players who weren't even born when his career was ongoing, much less when it ended, is truly a sight to behold. Great to see players like Taylor appreciate Henry Aaron's place in the game's history. One ball, one strike. Play one and two. Taylor had some Henry Aaron type numbers this year too in the minor leagues. No minor league player at any level had as many as 27 homers, make it 23 homers and 37 stolen bases. Nobody combined those two numbers as high as he did. The 
That one got through the legs of Bethancourt. Late break out at second by Coburnus. He didn't see the baseball, but still made it to third base with that instant incident on a wild pitch. Tried to shift over and get in front of it. Still got through the five hole, a little late, dragging that right leg over there. Now pressure on the infield, especially to make a play. Won't have to. Wood just struck out Michael Taylor. He's got five strikeouts in the first three innings of our ball game. And the Braves break through though. No score. Home third coming up. And Alex Wood and Phil Gosselin are coming up against Blake Trinan. Lined the other way by Upton on the first pitch. PJ Upton, a leadoff single. That's the third Braves hit. Nice job there by BJ. Looked like a pitch upstairs that he took the other way. Another leadoff man on for Atlanta. Yeah, Bill High down the middle. Let's see if Alex can move up and around. Down our way, one ball, no strikes. Five sacrifices this year for the Braves pitcher. And even count. has his right hand so far up the barrel of the bat that he doesn't leave himself much room. I mean he's got to be so precise with the baseball hitting that little space on the end of the bat. Mm -hmm. but it really should only be about to the brand or so. Right around the label. Yeah. And he's unable to help himself.
way above the brand. Punching at it as opposed to catching it. So let's see if Upton tries to steal a base for Phil Gosselin. Phil singled up the middle to start the Braves offensive night. EJ 19 out of 26 in stolen bases. Pretty good lead from first, not going. And the pitch is inside. The amazing stats of this Braves ball club this year is all the different players who hit in different spots. There have been multiple men in every spot in the batting order for Freddy Gonzalez's team this year, with the exception of one. Gosselin's the eighth different man to bat first. We've had eight different number two hitters and on and on you go with the exception of the three spot. Freddie Freeman has started every game and batted third. And he's lurking in the Atlanta dugout. Good move there by trying and almost caught BJ leaning. Pitch bounced toward Espinosa at short. He'll take a look at second, but has only one play. And Gosselin grounds out, Upton at second for Anderson Simmons. So as Joe mentioned, the Braves have had their share of leadoff hits in this series. Let's see if they can bring Upton around with a two out hit. Hit 261 this year with runners in scoring position, 234 with two outs. If there's a subplot to the fact that the Braves have not been able to score runs during this stretch where they've lost 11 out of 14 games in five straight, it's that when they do get some guys in scoring position, they just can't get them in. 19 for 101 in the month of September. Yeah, and that's one of those things that just gets contagious and just rolls and rolls. And the air towards center. Taylor drifts to his left and in right center field makes the play. And that retires the side. Braves can't cash in. BJ Upton's leadoff hit. And we go to the fourth.
This was the swing of Anderson Simmons earlier tonight. Yeah, just moments ago in that fly ball to center, you can see that his leg collapsed under him, but his left leg kind of flew out. Trying not to put too much pressure on it. And he's been removed from the game. So Romero Pena checks in. He's going to play second. Phil Gosselin will slide from second to short. Wood will face the two, three, four hitters on Washington's lineup card tonight. That's Espinosa, Franzen, and Tyler Moore. I like this move for Freddy Gonzalez. Get him out of the game now. The Braves have an off day tomorrow and a night game coming up on Friday. Almost get handled to two full days of rest. See if that ankle will calm down a little bit. Obviously, they need him in the lineup. As healthy as he can be this time of year. Just get him out now before you risk not having the option of getting him out of the game. One thing's for sure it's not going to get better playing. Right. Did he go? Yes, he did indeed. Espinosa is out on a check swing. And Wood has struck out his sixth man tonight. Stop by there. Alex Woods had some big strikeout games this year. He's got another one working tonight. Twelve is his high. He last did that August 31st against the Marlins. in the hitter day of rest for Jason Worth and the rest of the mainstays in this Nationals lineup they head down to Miami to play the Marlins next they have eight games left with the fish who will be without Giancarlo Stanton yeah that was announced earlier today by the Marlins as Franson hits one out to second play for out number two after Stanton was hitting the face up in Milwaukee had to have some dental work done in fact Giancarlo Stanton the other day put a picture of himself up on social media it showed where the cuts on his face were and the swollen nature of the left side of his jaw no surgery to repair the facial fractures but some dental work was done and the Marlins announced today that they're not going to chance that he will not come back and play any more games in this 2014 season. That's too bad, but all things considered, we have to fix a couple of teeth. That's probably the best he could have hoped for. Exactly. So fortunate it didn't hit, hit his eye socket somewhere. Mm -hmm. Two for Tyler Moore, who struck out his first time up. And he lifts this one in the air towards center field. B.J. Upton's under it, and he's got it. Three up, three down in the fourth inning for Alex. And we'll see Freddie Freeman lead things off in a scoreless game.
It's not the first time I've lost my hat, I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. What happened there? There you go. Yeah, she's probably saying, who, Mom, Dad, who's this guy anyway? That was a great catch. <laughs> Uh, Freddie Freeman leads things off for Atlanta. Drew handed us a great note about Freddie Freeman. Braves first baseman is playing in game number one. 52 tonight. He's played 1,352 innings coming into play. The Braves record for most innings played is 1,447 and a third. That record was set by Andrew Jones back in 99. Hit a mile high to center. Taylor drifts back. And he's going to have room for the first down. That means Freddie needs a little more than 95 innings to pass Andrew Jones and break that record. With 11 games left, Freddie Freeman will pass that record if he plays in every remaining game for the Braves this year. Wouldn't surprise me. Me either. Even if they're eliminated from the wild card, I've got to figure he's going to be out there. Side for Justin Upton. Justin hit into a double play to end the Braves first. And outside, ball two. Jason Hayward to follow. Christian Bethencourt after that, we hope. No score fourth inning. Keep you up to date on what the Pirates are up to tonight. Pittsburgh's got the Red Sox. And it's not good news. They lead Boston 4 0 in the third inning. Francisco Liriano's pitching for the Pirates. No let up from the Pirates. Now they're playing real good ball right now. Colorado beat the Dodgers today 16 2. That's the second time in a week that the Dodgers have just been. Run filled game. Was it the Giants that they beat up on 17 zip? 17 to nothing. And the Rockies won 10 nothing yesterday. And that's an important game for Washington. Remember, they're trying to claim the best record in the National League. They're a full two games ahead of the Dodgers at the moment. It could be two and a half if the Braves fall to them tonight. Runner at first for Hayward, one out, and Jason takes a strike. One of the broadcasters for the Nationals said today about Jason that he said every time we play the Braves, Jason Hayward makes a play, sometimes two a game. But every series, he seems to make two or three highlight type plays, including the one he made last night, going in the gap to right center to make that diving catch. And he said, I was down in the camera well at that point, waiting for the game to end, anticipating the national celebration. And he said, as soon as that ball was hit, I thought, oh, that's in the gap. And Jason lays out and makes the play. Yeah, he covered a lot of ground. It's not out of the realm of possibility that Jason Hayward might be a platinum glove winner. His running field has made one error this year, one. Think of all the chances he has had, all the balls that he's gotten to because of his speed and range. One ball, two strikes. Well, I like what he did with his stance. I like the fact that he brought that back foot a little closer to the plate. He's not tying himself up quite so much on inside pitches. He and Greg Walker and Scott Fletcher worked very hard on that. And on his hands. Make sure he doesn't get them started too soon. This one popped up. And the play made at third by Kevin Franzen. And Hayward pops out for the second out of the inning. And Christian Bethencourt will hit with two outs.
Bethancourt took a call third strike. He was back in the second inning. Busy baseball night in the nation's capital area, the Beltway area. And all about what Washington did. How about the Orioles? They clinched the East last night. Division champions for the first time since 1997. Shot towards second. Late break by Cobernus, and he is still able to get his man from the seat of his pants. Bethancourt thought he beat the rap at first base. He pointed immediately to the dugout and asked for Freddy Gonzalez to come out and check the call to first base. Uh, we got a bat jump on that, or he just didn't see it, but he he was delayed in getting over there. Then didn't get it on the first grab. Ed Hickox is the first base umpire. Out. Yeah. And apparently he was. The Braves will not challenge the call. Colburnus kicked it, dropped it, but still got his man, and that sends the game to the fifth. Spectacular play of Jason Hayward last night. Our SunTrust shining moment in the night lays out for the catch. Robs Wilson Ramos and talked to Jason about that today. Said, hey, if anybody's questioning this team's effort, I think you gave him a pretty good answer right there. And he said, absolutely, the effort is here. We're all disappointed. We understand that the fans are disappointed, but we are all still trying hard. Perfect example of that, I'd say, fellas. Great story, Jen. You're right. That was the play Joe was talking about a moment ago. You can't help results. You can always help effort. And Jason Hayward has done that. Effort like his, and and I told him tonight by the batting cage. I said, you know, you never take a play off. You don't take a pitch off. You run hard. You hustle every game. And I I wish it rubbed off on a lot of your teammates. That's the one thing you control every night you go out there is your effort. Two. Nate Sheerholtz. We're in the fifth already. No score. Sheerholtz, Souza, and Cobernus. Strike three inside. 
corner. I love it when lefties throw inside the lefties like that. Seven strikeouts for Woody. Frozen. Yeah. I don't know if he. I don't know if he meant to do it, but front door breaking ball. If he didn't mean to do it, he might want to take note of the reaction the left-handed hitter gave him. He might want to start practicing that. Steven Souza bats and is down a strike. Center field. Upton will turn and watch that one go way out of here. Souza almost hit the hitter's background in straightaway center field. A long solo home run has given Nationals a 1 0 lead. First big league homer. The sound doesn't. I mean, a home run doesn't sound a little different. You could see Alex's reaction immediately. Yeah, we talked about his numbers in Syracuse, and that was on display right there with that swing. Now Coburn has pops one up behind second base. And this one will be handled by Phil Gosselin. Remember, Ambleton Simmons left after the third inning with. And sore ankle and quickly two her out. Well, this game means very little for Washington. It means a lot for the Braves, but for the players in the lineup, as Joe alluded on Braves Live, these are big games too. The Nationals are being scouted by all the playoff hopeful teams in Atlanta tonight. And with the Nationals roster a very crowded one, some very deep and talented players. Souza can't fit in here. He might be able to bring a piece that they do need down the stretch. He has what every team covets, and that's big time power. He showed it off here. Leon flies to center, and Alex Wood is down a run after four and a half innings. He's due third for the Braves. Nationals won Atlanta nothing. So the first in his big league career. Tough night for the Braves. Oh, oh. And that fan a moment ago, who's the president of the. No. Tom, no. Tom Glavin Fielding Fan Club. Find him and get that shirt now. I mean, 
mean, that was a direct hit. I hope the guy's nose is okay because he just turned himself into a bobblehead. Yes, he did. Hmm. Yikes. So that homer by the Nationals gives them a home run in 22 consecutive road games. And that is the second longest in baseball history since 1900. The 96 Orioles homered in 24 straight road games. With that center field shot, the back of Trainin's jersey and his cap. It looks uh, like a little history, like their forefathers. It's like the Expos Road Uni. The gray, the red, and then the blue cap. Uh huh. One one pitch. Yeah, the Nationals are the former Expos. That could be Tony Armas Jr. Ground ball deep short. Espinosa to his right. He's got a strong arm. On me. Johnson's out number one. He's bounced out to short twice. Rough September for Chris. Six hits and 41 at bats. Tell you what, between Espinosa, Rendon, and Desmond, they got some guys with some cannon arms. Braves have three hits tonight. BJ has one of them, a leadoff single in the third inning. Giants beat Arizona today, four to two. It's a big game in the National League West. The Giants have not given up hope of catching and passing the Dodgers. They're now two games back. We've got a big series in L.A. coming up Monday. They took two out of three from the Giants earlier in the week. 0-2 pitch for Upton is rolled toward short. Espinosa, tricky hop. Two out. Trinan's wearing out the infield grass tonight. And he doesn't walk many guys. His minor league credentials throughout his career. Very low walk totals. Eight ground outs, two strikeouts. Only one home run allowed in 41 big league innings. Well, 45, 46 now. Williams talked earlier today about the Nationals ball club the decisions they have to make as, as to how they shape their 25 man playoff roster. As that one missed downstairs. It's doubtful that Tanner Roark is going to be in their starting rotation. But he's a 14 game winner. Figure Fister and Strasburg and Zimmerman and Gio Gonzalez the veteran and a left hander. Might have a leg up on Roark. 14 wins, Tommy's 14 wins. Yeah, yeah, and if you're gonna go a little bit with the hot hand, you know, I think Roark's had a little bit better year, so I wouldn't be so sure that that would be the way they go, but certainly I think it's safe to say both those guys would be around. It's just which role they fulfill might be a little bit questionable, but and who they're playing, right? But that certainly is a good uh, potential problem to have to try and figure out what you're gonna do there. Strike three. Alex Wood is caught looking and trying to leads by a run. Braves have now scored in one inning out of their last 24. That's not going to feed the Bulldog. We head to the sixth.
leads by a one nothing score after five innings in game three. She didn't want to wave real hard. She's afraid her hand would fall off this time. <laughs> Fans get the best seats in the house. The Braves square off against the Pirates. A spot in the postseason could be on the line September 22nd through the 25th. That's Monday through Thursday. Today only. Get dugout seats for just $38. You have to buy them tonight at Braves.com slash steal. Pittsburgh's winning again tonight. 5-0 over the Red Sox. Big night for Boston in that game. That young outfielder, Rusny Castillo, whom they signed from Cuba, is making his big league debut tonight. Oh, wow. I'll tell him to do something. Yeah. Make a call. As Jim said, Pirates are playing good ball. They've won nine of their last 11 games. They're taking advantage of a soft part of their schedule. They're in their fourth series against teams below 500 in a row. The good teams do. I was going to say the teams that have kind of really established themselves here with these playoff spots are all getting hot, which will make for a real interesting postseason if everybody's playing well going in. Big game in St. Louis tonight as well. The Brewers are playing the Cardinals. Milwaukee's won five of six all of a sudden. They're four behind St. Louis and a game and a half behind Pittsburgh. And Milwaukee and the Pirates play each other next. As Blake Trinan leads things off in the Washington sixth. Great races in our league, great races in the American League, too. A lot to be decided in the junior circuit as well. Trinan is down on strikes. Alex Wood has another whiff tonight. That's number eight. Let's take a look at our National League wildcard standings. Are brought to you by Direct TV. Here's how it stands at the moment. The Marlins lurking as well. They're a game and a half behind the Braves. Six games. The Braves six games back of Pittsburgh in the lost column. With four left with them. But as much as we talk about the Braves and Pirates. None of that's going to matter if you can't win games between here and there. And for Alex Wood, same sad story. Here we are, sixth inning. How many runs have the Braves given him tonight? Zero. Yes. Can you win a game with zero? Um, no. no. Okay. Groundhog Day. That's a good description. He struck out Michael Taylor twice, though. This time the youngster rips it past Gosselin into left center field. Taylor hesitated around first. Now Upton with a rainbow throw back to the mound. If Michael had been running there, it might have been close. A one out double here in the sixth inning. Playing him to pull. Long way to go for both Upton brothers. BJ had him played over in right center. So Espinosa, the hitter, he's got a hit. Washington has but three of them tonight. One of them though left the ballpark. Let's not lose sight of who we play next. The Mets are in town over the weekend. That's one nine one over Miami last night. We've got Dylan G on the mound tonight. And are losing in Miami three nothing to the Marlins. Well, Miami has an even tougher road into the playoffs than Atlanta does. What you don't want to have happen is Miami pass you in the division race. They're a game and a half behind Atlanta in third place. Winds picking up, blowing from left to right. 
it slightly in toward the Braves dugout. Two and one. Spinoza hit on the foot on a 3 1 pitch, and the Nationals have met at first and second with one out. Kevin Franzen coming up. Nope, wasn't the foot. So two on one out. Franzen hit into a double play to end the first. It's been a problem all year for the Braves. After they picked him up. Being designated for assignment by the Phillies. At 393 against the Braves this year. Taylor's going to try to steal third. Bethancourt's throw is going to beat it. Nice catch and throw by Bethancourt to Neil Taylor for the second out. Right on the money, too. Got that there in a hurry. Yes, he did. And Espinosa got caught napping at first. I was going to say, surprised he didn't go unless his knees bothering him after getting hit by the pitch. But Taylor is second out. And a 1 1 count for Franzen. Now the runner goes and it's hit in the air to center. And BJ Upton is there to retire the side. Wood pitches around a double and a hit batsman. A caught stealing and a fly out sends this game to the home sixth.
One nothing Washington Alex Wood pitching a super ball game for the Braves He's allowed the Steven <laughs> Souza homer and that is it get the best seats of the house as the Braves square off against the Pirates postseason play could be on the line beginning Monday through Thursday tonight only get dugout seats for just 38 bucks you must buy them tonight at Braves.com slash steel new pitcher on the mound for the Nationals. Ross Detweiler, if memory serves, has always pitched well against the Braves. And has been in the bullpen all of this season. Lined over short. Boy, that was sizzled. Two hit game for Gosselin. Baseball player. People are learning quickly. That didn't know about him in spring training. And I'm not talking about fans. So again, Atlanta has a leadoff man on. Let's see if they can get the game tied. Ramiro Pena has his first at bat now in the sixth inning. Simmons left after three. You're right about his numbers against the Braves, though, Chip. Five games this year, eight innings, no runs allowed. His career a 269 ERA, and that includes some starts. If memory serves, Joe, if you like fastballs, you're going to like this man's repertoire. You may not like the results, but he's maybe a one, two, one and a half or one two pitch pitcher. Yeah, two seamers, four seamers, and he can throw hard, he can back off with his two seamer and get it to run away from right handed hitters. An occasional change or off speed pitch, but not many. Once it fouled by Pena, one ball, one strike. And as we analyze the Nationals and their chances in postseason play, their bullpen's much improved this year. That was a problem for them in the first half of the season last year. But they have veteran Jerry Blevins down there they have Detweiler as the butt is on the grass and trickling foul the last moment the man I think that's really going to help Washington is Matt Thornton hard for a left hander who they got off waivers from the Yankees first week of August couldn't agree more like him a lot match him up with the lefty even for one out or Back to back left handed hitters, awfully tough. You've seen how good the Braves bullpen has been in years past. You have three left handers who can pitch. That's a huge advantage for your manager if your starters falter midway through the ball game. Yeah, that's a big time huge advantage. You don't have to worry about playing that card, so to speak, early on if you need to. And just nice to be able to do it. Tries for Pena. Now it's a two ball, two strike count. And he pokes the ball off the first baseman's glove, and all hands are safe. Tyler Moore couldn't get to it cleanly. And Atlanta has two on with nobody out. A great example of someone who didn't get the punt down, but didn't they just go to swing off their back foot trying to hit the ball. The ball he was still trying to figure out a way to advance it. Still trying to find that hole and with two strikes put the ball in play and something good happened. Infield hit now Freddie Freeman. And fouled off Freeman's leg strike one. Let's take a trip down memory lane and talking about the Nationals bullpen. 2010. This is what the Braves had in their bullpen. Billy Wagner, Greg Kimbrell, Eric O'Flaherty, and Johnny Venters. Pretty salty. That's pretty good. A 
Bouncing ball to first. Moore's got it. Fires to second one. And no chance to make the play at first. That might have been a little late to the bag. Runners at the corners now with one out for Justin Upton. Right into throwing first baseman. A little more momentum when you turn your hit back to the infield and you turn your back to home plate. Maybe a little more in your throw. Good play, but Espinosa was smart not to return it. Let's see if Upton can lift the fly ball at the least here. And get this thing tied. He has been doubled up and walked. Trannon's five shot on innings. Justin Upton and the Braves trying to come back here in the sixth. And he's down to his last strike. Tell you what, was the wind galing like this when Souza hit his homer? No. No. Going straight in now from left field. Will give the Braves a big lead. One two pitch. It didn't stick in the catcher's glove. Break for Justin. He's still alive. Jason Hayward or a Washington mistake to tie the game. For Justin after that great August. It's been a real battle for him in September. That's. 31 players he's left on base now in September. After a month of August, that saw him explode. And driving everybody. 28 RBIs, seven homers. One one pitch. Did that clip him? Yeah, it did. Hayward got hit up and in. He's checking the left hand, and Jim Lovell, the Brave certified athletic trainer, on his way out to attend to him. Freddie Freeman hanging out at first base to make sure his teammates all right. And Atlanta's got him loaded with two outs. Oh, his thumb. That is something I, I don't know that I've ever seen that where the thumb was sticking up and the ball hit the thumb and not anything else. Like he's moving it okay. Man, that slow motion camera is amazing. Yeah. Really cool shots. Mm. 
So a big spot for Christian Bethencourt. Bases are loaded with two outs. Christian's batted with the bases loaded this year. Sharply hit off the glove. Shallow right. And a couple of runs are going to score. And the Braves have taken a 2 1 lead. Now Hayward's going to try to score. He's going to beat the right. Bethan caught to second. He's going to try for third. Jason Hayward, though, the base hit scores two, but when the throw comes into second base, Jason just keeps going. He's watching, he's watching, and when they lob the ball in, all right, fine. I'll take the run if you're going to lob it. Don't take me for granted. Good base running all around. So Christian Bethencourt with a base hit knocks home two runs, I would assume. We'll see if an error is charged on Washington that allowed him to gallop all the way around the third base. Mental error, maybe, but I don't know how you can call a throw an error, but. Stranger things have happened. Yeah, I don't know. Why not give him three RBIs? Because Jason was watching, he never stopped. He was just watching to see how they hit, threw the ball back into the infield and kept going. And maybe because of the overthrow at the plate, that allowed Bethencourt to go to third. First runs of the year off Detweiler. No matter how you score it, the Braves enjoy a lead for Alex Wood. Pop up right side. Long run. Tyler Moore, no play. What were one of his keys? Hold the lead. Protect the lead. Told you it was coming. He is little faith. Do you know the lottery numbers this week? <laughs> Pull Harry carry right out. Hey! The answer to your question, Tom, no. I'm no. Not Ball two strikes. And outside. You know, Deadweiler spelled backwards as Ray Wilton. <laughs> two two pitch. He's out of play. Five, Boston one. Cardinals nothing, Brewers nothing. Third inning in St. Louis. That's high. Best case scenario, if these scores hold, is that, yes, Pittsburgh and Milwaukee square off. If Brewers sweep the Pirates, Pittsburgh comes here, we clobber them. A fine play. That, of course, necessitates the Braves playing good ball against the Mets. We have given them trouble this year. Well, you're, you're in a position where you pretty much got to clobber everybody the rest of the yeah, way. Yeah, good point. After the Pittsburgh series, we head to Philadelphia for the final regular season weekend to face the Phillies. 3 2 pitch. He is up and away. Detweiler might have been up a little late. He's given up three hits, a hit batsman, a walk. 
Well, here comes Steve McCanny with the Visine. Maybe a little Pepto Bismol. Try to have no baby. Yeah. So a three run inning. The Braves will send their eighth man to the plate. It's BJ Upton. While that conversation gets started, we'll remind you to tweet your photo using hashtag SouthFanPhoto for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by ATT. See a fan photo from a fan named Agnes tonight. I'd like to see a fan photo of a fan doing the chop. First time we've seen the chop here for a while. A, maybe someone named Agnes doing the chop. Okay. Compromise. As Upton goes to work and looks way up and away. Two strikes. Thirty two pitches for Detweiler in the inning. And Aaron Barrett loosening up in their pen now. With a full count. There he goes, and Upton pops it up. Moore and Coburnus with the wind playing tricks. It's time to more. Eight men come to the plate for the Braves. Three of them score. Christian Bethencourt with a big hit, and Atlanta enjoys the lead for Alex Wood.
a key, protect the lead. Well, now Woody has a chance to do just that. Our Georgia Lottery hitting the jackpot. His numbers so far in this game through his first six innings, how about eight strikeouts going after guys and talking to some of his teammates earlier today. They were saying how much they want to get one for Alex Wood. They respect so much the job that he's done. Freddie Freeman telling me he loves the way he's aggressively going after guys this year. And he said he thinks that Alex Wood has turned into one of the premier pitchers in this league. Hard to argue with that, Jen. But ultimately, fortunately for starting pitchers, or relief pitchers for that matter, Tom, people see the record and they say, well, he's just had a so so year. That's couldn't be farther from the truth. No, absolutely. I mean, you see the one loss record, but then you can't help but notice the ERA. So you got to figure there's something more to it, and there certainly has been for, for Alex. And Alex has seven wins this year. We showed you these numbers earlier. 43 runs scored by the Braves. And his nine losses, 18. He's got about a four to one strikeout to walk ratio, too. Sharply hit and into left field by Tyler Moore. It's Tyler's first hit of the ball game. He's out of Brandon, Mississippi, and Mississippi State. And some of his friends and family are sitting below us tonight. So he's aboard to start the seventh. See how Alex fares in this inning. He has had some seventh inning trouble this year. In very close games. Let's see if we can navigate his way to the stretch with the lead. He's gotten Sheerholtz on strikes twice, 8 0 for 2. A strike. Oh, and two. Softly hit toward third. Chris Gloves grabs guns and pulls Freeman off the bag. Tough play. And Sherholtz snapped his bat, but has an infield hit. And Washington has a seventh inning threat. I can't begin to tell you how much that hurt and how much grief he'll get when he gets back to his own dugout for taking a full swing and hitting the ball about 60 feet. And at 93 pitches, that's going to be the end of the line for Alex Wood. Freddie Gonzalez with a couple of claps. Alex is begging, but won't be allowed to finish. Seventh inning trouble for Alex. Couple of hits. They represent the tying runs. The game in the hands of the Braves bullpen with Atlanta up 3 1.
We honor the late great star of the Pittsburgh Pirates, the one and only Roberto Clemente. What a remarkable man, what a remarkable Major League Baseball resume. Look at these numbers, fellas. All 18 big league career years with the Pirates. Pretty good numbers. That is 3,000 hit, I believe, on his last at bat the last year he played. I know Don Sutton has said several times he was one of the scariest guys he had to face because of how hard he could hit the ball back through the middle. Steven Souza bats for the Nationals. He'll face David Carpenter. Souza homered last time up. And a strike. One more note on Roberto Clemente. He was a rule five pick. Fans may not have known that about Roberto Clemente. He was signed by the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1952, was left unprotected in the 1954 draft. Imagine if Roberto Clemente had played for the Dodgers instead of the Pirates and how different the Pittsburgh franchise might have been. And for that matter, the Dodgers too. Two strikes for Steven Souza. Back to back Washington hits here in the seventh. Alex Wood hits another butte. And the bullpen's got to protect his lead. And Carpenter buzzed the tower inside. One and two. David gave up a run last night in his inning of work, gave up a double to Desmond. Ultimately, he ultimately scored on a wild pitch. Time called. As we went to break. Alex Wood was not happy about not being able to finish this inning. But with the Braves in the straights they're in, the manager's got to manage the game the way he thinks it's best, as he always does. With fresh bullpen in there. The Braves have to protect this lead. Can't let it escape. And Susan's already homered against him tonight. Back and out of play. Well, he made a good pitch to Shearholtz. He just got a bad result, and it ultimately took him out of the ball game. And that that alone would be enough to aggravate you. Yeah, I think part of his outburst, I guess, was a little bit of frustration. You finally, get a lead. You go out there, you give up a couple of hits. The second one, not being hard enough to break a pane of glass, and walking off the field thinking, finally got a lead. Here we go again. Ball two strikes to Steven Souza. That's around play. Off day tomorrow for the Braves. The Mets are in town on Friday. Good pitching matchups. That entire series with New York, by the way. It starts Friday night with Julio Tehran and Zach Wheeler. It's a 7.35 start. One two pitch. Ooh, ouch. Right off the inside of the shin. Right above the ankle.
Warren Shearholtz, the Nationals runners, the one two pitch. Bouncer toward third. Johnson retreats, fires low to second. And good play by Pena to handle that throw. The Braves force out Shearholtz, Moore at third, Souza at first. And now there's one out. Two high chops. No chance to get a double play. Good, good play on Chris's part. Smart play on the part of Pena. Governor's bats. Jeff is 0 for 1 with a walk. Him up. And the play made by Pena, no advance by the Washington runners. Colbernus is retired, two out. Well, that was a good pitch by David. Looked like a two seamer that kind of ran in on the hands of Colbernus. Great spot. This Sandy Leon, the Washington catcher, is 0 for 2. So he's out of Maracaibo, Venezuela. That's oil country in the country of Venezuela in the northwest part. It's a giant lake there, Lake Maracaibo. They've got oil derricks dotted all over that lake. Hmm. And a switch hitter. 5'10, 205. Told you a non drafted free agent signed in 2007. Ramos with Lobotone and Leon got a nice solid catching core the catching rotation for the Nationals. The balls and a strike. Yes, carrying three catchers might be one of those aforementioned decisions for the Nationals, especially considering the injury issues that Wilson Ramos has had in regular season play. They're hard decisions, but they're the kind you like to have to make. Yeah. And Matt Williams talked about another one. Ryan Zimmerman is a decision. At eight at bats today, not in Florida. As he continues his rehab from the torn hamstring. Well, he'll get a chance down the stretch here. Play his way in or out, I would imagine. He's supposed to DH tomorrow and then could be in Miami when they play the Marlins this weekend. We'll have an extended bit of time, Tom, now that the division's wrapped up. As you said, play a couple different spots, test the legs, see if the bat's in shape, and then force the Nationals to decide. One ball, two strikes. Runner at first goes. Pitch cut on and missed. And Leon is retired. And David Carpenter, a terrific job of protecting a two-run Atlanta lead. Stretch time at Turner Field. That is in front of Washington now. 3-1 your score.
to the sixth inning tonight, show you how the Braves got their runs in the ball game. Those are our Home Depot tools from the dugout. A little carom off of Tyler Moore's glove led to a two run single, and Jason Hayward just kept running when they lobbed the ball back in. That produced a third run as Christian Betancourt kept running too, and it got to third base on the error by the shortstop's throw to the plate. Christian's first at bat of the year with the bases loaded turns into two RBIs. Third run on the error. And that trio of runs came against Ross Detweiler. He gives way to Aaron Barrett, who's in his 47th game, and he'll have the pitcher spot them at the top of the order for Atlanta. This guy's got a good arm. You see the 48 strikeouts in 37 innings. Two seamer, four seamer. Low to mid 90s, and he's got a slider. Baseball America says he has the best slider in the national system. And he was a guy who was highly sought after as a youngster. The Dodgers drafted him, the Twins drafted him, the Rangers drafted him. And he finally signed with Washington, who took him in the ninth round in 2010. Bonifacio bats for Carpenter and skies one out of play. Alex Wood, six innings of five hit, one run ball. David Carpenter has scored a stream in relief. Leads three to one. Back our way out of play, one and two. Downstairs, two balls, two strikes. Fascio with his eighth different big league team in Atlanta this year. Winning 239 is a brave. This is his 32nd game. He started 20 times. 13 of those starts came in center field. 2 2 pitch. As low, there was that breaking ball, full count. Valuable player, though, because not only can he play center field, he can play on the infield, second or short. Foul at the plate. Do it again. Pirates nine, Boston one, bottom six. Pittsburgh's in good shape tonight. Miami four two over the Mets in the home seven in New York. Cubs two one over the Reds, top of the fifth. Milwaukee nothing, Cardinals nothing, top of the fourth. Phillies are in San Diego later. It's Cole Hamels and Eric Stoltz. A little pop behind short. Nice grab. Is handled by Espinosa. Good arm and good range. And here's out number one. Time for tonight's AT&T U-verse trivia question. Since it's Tom Glavin night, it's a Tom Glavin-based trivia question. 436 career quality starts are the ninth most in baseball history. I didn't know that. I didn't either. That's that's <laughs> a, that's amazing. Who has the most quality starts in big league history? How can you not say Cy Young? Cy Young, Walter Johnson. I mean, Cy made like 9,000. Yeah, at least 9,000 starts. I think he had more wins than I had quality starts. <laughs> Good Just point. to put it in perspective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Cy Young pitched for my favorite all time team. The Cleveland Spiders. An all time. Lowest winning percentage. In baseball history. Cy Young from 1890 to 1911 pitched for five clubs. 511 wins. 316 losses. And a career ERA of 2.63. Now, we've just now been given an asterisk on the question. Uh -huh. The quality start stat only dates back to 1914. So, Cy Young, I guess, would not be included in that question. Roller to the left side by Gosselin. Nice pick up at third, but an infield hit. Three hit night for Phil Gosselin. When you're hot, you're hot. And in the brave circumstance, if you're hot, you play. Tom, the other night I said that he reminded me a lot of Matt Williams, the way he went about his business. He even looks a little bit like him, and he certainly runs like him. Yeah, he does. A lot of similarities. <laughs> Good, uh, it's a good guy to be compared to. You bet. It's Phil's second three hit game of the year. And Romero Pena, the batter. Let's not forget his infield hit that kept the sixth inning going. He's had two on, nobody out, and that helped lead to a three run uprising. I'd say Matt Williams would be a player anyone would want to try to copy. 1,878 career hits. Led the league in homers one year with the Giants with 43. Led him in RBIs in 1990. 99 with the Diamondbacks. How's this for a year? Hit 303, scored 98, hit 35, and drove in 142. And could pick it at third base. Ten errors that year. 154 games. I hope he enjoyed the celebration last night. You know, he's even as a player, you, you never saw much emotion from him. Very professional. There were a lot of highs and lows that didn't appear from Matt Williams, but I, you know, he enjoyed it last night, last night because it's his first year of managing. I hope he did. I mentioned earlier, for Washington Nash, every team has highs and lows over the course of the year. Even in a good year, there are some valleys along with the emotional peaks. Washington's won the division with their division starting lineup together, a grand total of 19 games. And talking with Mike Rizzo about his first year manager, their staff did a great job of helping Matt Williams navigate those. Inevitable lows during the season. He's not a guy that was going to panic, but he said, Look, our staff did a wonderful job of helping coach him through the first year as a manager, and he did a great job of being the face and the leader of those men in uniform in his first year. That's why you surround yourself with good men, guys you can trust. And a credit to him for being willing to accept that those suggestions or that coaching, if you will, that he didn't feel like he knew it all by just stepping into the dugout and taking over. Well, Randy Knorr is bench coach. He's been in Washington a while. He was there for Davy Johnson, so had an idea of how the Nationals had been playing the last couple of years. Steve McCaddy, their pitching coach, knows all the ins and outs of their young. Starting pitching staff and Randy Nor was a candidate for the job. Mm -hmm. So a credit for him. I think he was even interviewed for the job. Credit to him. He's the guy right there giving the signs for taking the bench coaching role again and helping out. In the air to center off the man of Pena. And that's the second out. That'll bring up Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman. 
chasing a little history tonight for the Braves as we've mentioned a couple of times he has dominated Washington pitching you'll see that on our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. One more to pass Rafi. Swing and a drive, hammer deep right, but that ball had too much top spin on it. Boy, he hit it right on the button. But Freeman and the Braves are done in the home set. 3 1, Atlanta the lead. We go to the eighth. Sony Pictures, the equalizer. Top of the 8 3 1 our score. And as promised earlier in the game, we have the ATT fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag South Fan Photo for a chance for it to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast. Brought to you by ATT. Hey! Oh, Tom loves Glavin. <laughs> Good thing I'm a mild mannered guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bonifacio stays in the game to play second base as Jordan Walden's on for the eighth inning. He's got Scott Hairston opposing him in the batter's box. Tell you what, last couple of days. And into tonight. Have you ever been to a parade where you just keep looking down the street thinking, my goodness, how many more floats are there? It's kind of the way it's been here for the bobblehead and all the. How long are they going to worship this guy? I mean, I, I, <laughs> it's like a parade. <laughs> the parade the parade worship. Where'd that come from? <laughs> from the chicks <laughs> digging along. Oh, come on. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> Hairston flies out to right. <laughs> okay, perfect. Now, now I feel better. Now we're pulling out all the stops. Yeah, let's cut to the booth, Cam. Joe, where's yours? I, I may abstain. I am. I'm, yours is at home. Tell the truth. It is. Yeah. Taylor shoots one toward right. 
Wins playing tricks with that, pushes it away from Hayward, then it bounce out. Of oh, play. no, I don't think we can show the booth. I think we need to show that foul ball again. Well, okay. I'm not sure who's got the Baker head. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if anybody deserves to have a, a special year, it's you, Tommy. We we we're having fun, of course, but all of us are so proud of what you and Chris do away from the ballpark, what your career has meant to the Braves, the game of baseball, the Hall of Fame, and the like. It's always a lot of fun to have you upstairs with us. And uh, is this your final game? Do you have another one after this? Or no, is this... I have the Pittsburgh series. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Well, enough about that. Yeah, oh, exactly. no, too. <laughs> but it is a lot of fun to have you up here, and we uh, are so proud of your year. And oh, it's a long way from being over. Yes, it is. As Taylor <laughs> swings and is retired for the second out, he struck out three times to go along with the double tonight. Let's see, eight. Nine, ten Nationals have struck out of the game. Alex Wood got eight of them. Carpenter one, now Walden one, and here's Espinosa. That's a good crowd, good turnout for Bobblehead Night. And hopefully the Braves can make that three spot hold up. Talk all the time about getting on a roll. The only way to get on a roll is to win the first one. And you try to win the next day and the next day and the like. You like your chances with Julio Tehran getting the ball on Friday. The Braves sitting where they are in the wild card race. They need some help. However, they can get it. They'll take it. But all of that need for help starts with helping themselves, and they've done that to this point tonight. Atlanta leads three to one on seven hits, all three runs in the sixth. Espinosa, a little tardy on a 96 mile an hour fastball. Fastball chaser too far off the plate. And a wild swing and a miss. Espinosa is out on strikes. Must be too tired to run. Braves will watch him concede the out, and it's a perfect inning for Jordan Walden.
AT&T U-verse, your local Ford dealers, and Synovus, the bank of here. Fan, fans catch the Braves Met Series all weekend long on Fox Sports South. Friday, game one, 7 Eastern. Game two, Saturday at 6.30 Eastern. And Sunday, John Smoltz, Smoltz uh, easy for me to say, John Smoltz will be in the booth for game three with coverage starting at 1 Eastern, all on Fox Sports South. You guys better give Smoltz as much grief as you've given me for the last three days. That's all I know. Well, the weird part about all that is maybe the ironic part is that you've had all this stuff kind of bestowed on you. You've had the bobblehead, of course, tonight. The honor, honors of being in the Hall of Fame. John just comes and expects it. <laughs> Good point. He brings it on himself. Yeah, so we just... Right. I go along and get in line and kind of go, yeah, you're right. You sure are, John. <laughs> it's been said many a times, a hat in silence would take John a long, long way. <laughs> Is that anything like that horse? Yeah. I'm still trying to remember what that yeah. was. Something about riding a horse in Christmas. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't go there for you guys. You gotta look it up on your own. One ball, two strikes. Jason Hayward is due next for the Braves. He's not standing in the on deck circle. Ooh. Jerry Blevins just missed the inside edge for Justin Upton. How close was this? On the PNC Bank. Pitch tracks. Little in. Remember Jason Hayward was hit by a pitch. It caught his thumb. But that didn't cause him some discomfort as the game has lengthened. He was hit by that pitch in inning number six. Scored the third and final Braves run. And Upton went fishing, didn't get it. Justin's down on strikes, and Janet will be Joy Terdoslovich for Jason Hayward. Can you tell us what's up? Yeah, Jason Hayward and Freddie Gonzalez were having a conversation in the last inning after Jason had been in the batting cages about whether or not that thumb felt well enough for him to get up there in the batter's box. And I can't tell you if it was Jason who said it's not quite good enough or Freddie who said, hey, let's not take the chance. But let's just say they came to a mutual agreement that they're not going to take the chance at this time to have him get in there and bat if it's not 100 percent. And with the lead and a day off tomorrow. Any extra treatment this time of year can only help. So Trevaslovich gets in at bat here in the eighth inning. But you've got three outs to get. You do lose his defense out in right field. That's considerable. One ball, no strikes. And in at the knees. Great playoff games potentially in the American League. Royals leading the White Sox. That's 5 1 in the fifth. Kansas City all over Chris Sale tonight. Royals and Tigers in a great race in the AL Central. Nori Aoki for Kansas City is 11 for 12 at the plate against the White Sox in that set. Crazy game last night in Minnesota. The Twins had a two run lead in the ninth and J.D. Martinez hit a three-run homer in the top of the ninth, and Minnesota then came back against Joe Nathan and beat him anyway. Tonight, David Price is pitching for the Tigers. That's a close game this evening. 4-3 is the score. Minnesota gives the Tigers trouble. They're 7-7 seven and seven with them. And a strike to Joey T. Evens it up. Let's take another look at that one on our PNC Bank pitch tracks. Looked like it was a little off the plate. Yep. 
Nice job by Leon to make it look good. And Joey didn't get the slow breaking ball. I was looking at all their guys in their bullpen tonight, and they've got 11 guys now. Training started, so that would leave 10 in their bullpen tonight. And Blevins is the only guy that averages somewhere lower than 91 miles an hour. He is 87 to 91. Everybody else pretty much starts at 91 and goes up. How effective is that, though? When you face an offense, all that power, and then a guy with his control and his, I guess, lack of velocity. Look what he's doing to these Braves. He's had him off stride this entire inning. Upton, Tarasilovich, and now Christian Bethencourt. Now Jamie Moyer of him. His best bolt right there at 90. But there's something to be said for that. Kirk balls around in the low 70s. That's pretty good spread on your fastball from 90 down to low 70s. Clements has pitched in the playoffs before in 2012 with Oakland. I'm sure that's something else to consider. He's He's been there before. Jerry's out of Braves country, born in Johnson City, Tennessee. Nothing and two for Bethancourt, who has the big hit in the game for the Braves. And this one's poked out towards short. Espinosa. I love watching him throw. He's got a good arm. Last call for Washington. We head to the ninth inning. It's 3 1. Atlanta leads it. All year long, Braves baseball is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, a low price every day. Before we tell you about Craig Kimball's season, let's head back to our AT&T Universe trivia question. Tommy Glavin, 436 career quality starts, the ninth highest total in the history of the game. Since 1914, who has the most quality starts? I'm thinking about somebody who, who's won a lot of games, who pitched a long time. Warren Spahn pitched well into his 40s. So did Nuxie. Um, 
I think I'm going to go with Warren Spahn. That's how I was going to go with too. Um, I don't know, like Walter Johnson, Christy Matheson, guys like that. I think are too far ago. So Nolan Ryan. How about your teammate Greg Maddox? I had thought about him too. Let's see if any one of us is right. Wow! Oh, oh, really? 483 quality starts. Well, I would have thought it would have been a lot more than that. Uh, me too. Yeah, me too. Uh, Nolan Ryan second. Maddox is third. Then Clemens, Seaver, Gaylord Perry, Carlton, and Necro. Three Braves in the top nine. Wow. Ouch. Oh boy. Bethancourt got whacked. With the ball or the bat? I'm not sure. I think it was a bat. Back of the head. Big swing by Franson, and he immediately leaned over to make sure Bethancourt was okay. Baseball. Yeah, All baseball. baseball. But he he ducked, ducked here. Bit, yeah. Yeah, Franson with the big swing thought it was the bat. Yeah, but it wasn't. It was the baseball. You know, it wasn't that long ago that catchers didn't wear helmets. Yeah, they just had their baseball cap on under their under their mask. And I saw more than once a catcher get hit with the back swing of a bat and get cold cocked. I mean, knocked out. Yeah, that's what started him wearing helmets, wasn't it? Was the yeah. back swing, not mm -hmm. so much foul, foul balls. Right. So on the foul ball, Franson digs back in. And he is very late. Well, the talked earlier this year about the evolution of catcher's equipment. The old days, catchers wore no gloves, they wore no face masks. And they finally had fencing masks to use as protective headgear. So that's fouled away. That was one of, I don't want to interrupt you, but that was one of the exhibits for me at the Hall of Fame that was really cool, was to see the evolution and the change in the catching equipment, and the gloves, the mask. I thought it was really cool. That and the evolution of the baseball, I thought was really cool. It's a great museum. Roger Bresnahan is in the Hall of Fame. This ball's bounced to the right side. Kimball sprints to the pillow. Good feed from Freeman. Well, it wasn't until 1907 that a catcher wore what we would call the full catcher's protective arsenal. The shin guards, the chest protector, the mask, and the like. That came in 1907. First time Kimbrell's pitched in a week. He last pitched in Washington to get the save for Aaron Harang in that last game of the series at Nationals Park. Did not pitch in Texas, of course. And not in the first two games of this series. You gotta like watching him pitch. Love it. Reminds you a lot of you. Yeah, absolutely. Here's a fastball. Go ahead and try and hit it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're running out of time. I'm just trying to set you up a, just a few more times. Make you feel better before. Uh, we both had the same position. That's where the similarities end. <laughs> yeah, with him, you just worry in a situation like this where he hasn't been out there in so long that he's going to overthrow. Tyler Moore, the batter. He had a single last time up, a one for three game. Braves have already clinched the season series with Washington. That's cold comfort, though, with the Nationals winning the division. But if this score holds, Atlanta will go to 11 and 8 this year against the Nats. They'll try to do the same or better in 2015. There is a chance, an outside chance, a very small chance, that 
The Braves could meet up with Washington in the playoffs this year. They need a lot of help. But it's still mathematically as possible. One, Washington would have to have the best record. And two, the Braves would have to get in as a wild card and win. ENC Bank pitch tracks again. Could have gotten that call. Popped up. Wingo's going to push that toward the on deck circle. And the court is there. He's got it right in front of the protective screen. Two out. Six thousand six forty three of the crowd tonight. And they are on their feet hoping to see Kernbull close it out for Alex Wood. It gave him a lead and the kid pitched great. So has the Atlanta bullpen. Names are off tomorrow. The Mets are in town over the weekend. Hope you make your plans to join us. Ron and Wheeler Friday night 735 first pitch Braves live on the air at seven. Sharply hit to second and the Braves have beaten Washington 3-1 the final score. Kimball saves his 44th game. Alex Wood now 11 and 10 on the year. Salvage one out of three. They do what they had to do. They win at home tonight. Hopefully, that's the start of a very, very good finish for the Braves. 3 1 Atlanta over the Nationals. Back to recap for you for the ballpark after this.